Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. I am so excited for this vlog today because it's a completely different style than I normally film. So if you're in for something comfy and cozy, just kind of chill, slow, romanticizing a new cast on, then grab yourself a project and something to drink and we're gonna enjoy these next 20 or so minutes together. <laughs> Hello. I love you. The project that I'm casting on today is the Twisted Tea Shirt by Brianna Lapino. What makes this kind of special is one, the yarn. I am using Ruby and Rose's yarn that is from her brand new collection that's not coming out until June 29th. So you're getting a little sneak preview here. This is one of the beautiful mini skein sets that is gonna be part of the collection. And then I'm using one of the other colors. It's a flowers gone wild. So there's so many beautiful things in here and not just pink. The other thing that makes this a really special project is I'm casting it on for vacation. I'm actually leaving in just two days as I am recording this. And I wanted to have a brand new project that was cast on and ready to go that was gonna be simple but also interesting and something just fun for me to make, something fun and new for a beach vacation. And what makes it even more exciting is that the pattern, which is by my friend Brianna, who is also called the Little Wolf Knits, is going on this vacation with me. So I was gonna surprise her, but uh, she already found out <laughs> that I'm making this because she watches the podcast and saw it on there. Kind of in theme with the way that I was recording this video, just taking my time and all of that. Actually, in total, I think you're gonna see four or five days of me getting this project ready, but I just wanted to wind the yarn nice and slow. So I decided to hand wind all of the mini skeins, and I did this while I was watching HGTV with my mom. So I'm actually at my parents' house in the video, and right now as I record this, and whenever I come home, it's just a really nice and relaxing time. And one of my favorite things to do is have breakfast with my mom while we watch something on the decorating channel. So it looks nice and fast on the video, but it actually took me an hour and a half <laughs> to wind all of those. Now before I can really get into enjoying this project and starting my swatch, I needed to do a little bit of tidying. Actually everything was so messy that I stepped on my needle bag and it felt like I broke a DPN. We are here in Nashville for about 10 days and it's crazy how all of our stuff can get all over the place in just those few short days. Most of the time we're living in a van, so we're really used to small spaces and I actually kind of love that because I have to manage everything in the moment and I can't have too much stuff. I do love sweets and this is a piece of key lime pie because a new cast on deserves a little treat. This bag right here is from Five to Six Handmade and it is absolutely incredible. Oh, on my phone right now, I am looking up the size needles that I need. I love this bag. It keeps me super, super organized and it works perfect for travel as well. Now the needles that I just pulled out were not the needles that I wanted to use. So I was looking on my projects page to find where were my size three needles and I found them in another project bag. Currently, I am using Lantern Moon 
wooden needles, I think the ebony ones, and I got them a little over a year ago, I want to say. I still love them so, so much. Before that, I was using the Knit Picks wooden needles. I'd used those for about 10 years and just decided, you know, it's time for an upgrade. I've always wanted these Lantern Moon needles and I'm really happy that I made the switch. So you may be wondering, how am I gonna make the twisted t-shirt, which has two colors, the main body color, and then the accent color that goes on the neck, the sleeves, and the bottom hem. But I am using a mini skein set and one full skein of yarn. So my plan with the mini skein set is to use that for the body. So I wanna do small stripes and just keep changing through the eight colors in this mini skein set. So my swatch is going to tell me two things. One, it's gonna tell me if I'm using the right needle size for gauge, but two, it's gonna tell me how I want to do my stripes. So I'm gonna test out three row and two row stripes, and you'll see at the end which one that I pick. time to just get comfy, get my Kindle out and work on this swatch because it did take me quite a few hours to get it done. Now I am doing a technique where you kind of fake the swatch in the round. So you'll see the really long strands hanging in the back. I do have a tutorial on how to do this on my channel and I'll make sure to link it down below. So here's a full set, actually two sets of three row stripes. And I almost stopped here because I really like how this looked, but I decided if I'm already going through all this effort, I might as well test out the two row stripes as well. Now it's gonna look like I haven't moved <laughs> all day, but this is actually many hours later. I am on a Zoom with the Love and Stitches membership and I'm asking their opinion on what they think. It's really hard to tell through Zoom how the two row and three row stripes are different. Now the next morning I got outside for a little bit, actually I think this is afternoon, and I had just a few more rows to do to finish up the swatch, and then I wanted to block it. <gasps> Toaster! So I'm keeping all of my yarns attached here, even when I'm blocking the swatch. The reason is that I want to be able to reuse all of this yarn. I don't know how much I'm going to need of each mini skein, so I'd rather not cut them off from the swatch. So what do you think here? Would you choose the smaller two row stripes or the larger three row stripes? Now for me, I'm liking the two row stripes quite a bit more. I feel like they blend a little bit more. The other advantage to the two row stripes is that with eight colors, I'll have 16 rows in total. So I feel like it will be okay for me to carry my yarns throughout, which means fewer ends and less bulk. We're gonna leave this guy to soak for about 20 minutes and then to dry overnight. While I was waiting for my swatch to dry completely, I decided I would take some new measurements. I'm glad that I did because uh, I've definitely changed sizes by an inch or so. Nothing too crazy, but it's always good to take measurements really anytime you start a new garment because what's the purpose of making something if it's not gonna be something you're comfortable wearing? Just for fun, I measured my full bust and then my upper bust. 
And you can see here that I'm taking a breath in before I find my final measurement because I really don't like things tight. I also wanted to find out about length. I'm planning to make this a little bit longer. It's a super crop uh, top, but this right here is one of my favorite t-shirts. So I thought I might as well measure from the underarm to the hem and then from the back neck to the hem to see if I could create something similar. Since my swatch is all dry now, I am taking a gauge measurement. Now, honestly, I should have taken this gauge swatch somewhere where it could be on a hard surface. This is probably not the best way to gauge. And I am taking notes right away into my Ravelry project page so that I don't forget what I noticed. My gauge on a size three was actually a little bit too small. So I'm planning to go up a needle size for the final project. Tutorial for a pretty simple technique. I left this in here because <laughs> You can see that I totally load the yarn on to my winder the wrong way. I haven't used a ball winder in a few months with being on the road, and so my brain just did not get it right the first go. This is one of my brand new yarn cozies that has not yet been finished yet. And this actually inspired me to do something else for this project, a project within a project, if you will. I'm ready to cast on the neckline and this project has an Italian twisted cast on, which I was watching that tutorial earlier in the video. And with any kind of cast on like this, I really recommend using stitch markers because the cast on itself twists and turns, it's really hard to count it past the length of your needle. So I like to cast on 20 stitches counting in my head. I recount them while they're still on my needle. And then I place a marker before they slide down to the cord and get all wonky. Then you can go back and you can count by 20s, which is what I'm doing here, and I know exactly if I got the right cast on number. It's another morning, so we're having a little brunch to celebrate a new cast on. I did my setup rows on a longer needle, and now I'm transferring to a 16 inch needle to join in the round. There's about two inches of ribbing to start out this pattern, and actually right now as I'm recording this, I have just about three quarters of an inch, so I'm trying to get it done before I actually leave on vacation. I always love to match stitch markers either to the project, to the activity, or just to my mood. And this time I was feeling something beachy, so I picked out a sand castle. I believe this one is from Simply Serving because I think it will be perfect for our beach vacation. Now, this is something that I did not plan to do when I started this project or this video, but you saw earlier all of the tangled mess that was those eight mini skeins. And if I'm keeping them attached the entire project, I need a project bag that can hold them organized and separate. So I thought maybe I'll make myself a tiny float tote. Float tote is my crochet pattern. It's actually my first pattern I ever released. And it comes with these cups that hold your yarn cakes. Now I didn't need big cups, so I decided to grab fingering weight scraps and make these tiny cups. Mm -hmm. 
I decided I didn't actually need to make eight cups. I could just make four and then use the spaces in between for the other four yarns. So here I'm trying to decide what shape I want the bottom of the bag to be. And I decided on a square. That's something different than I've ever done before. All my other float totes are either circular or oval. Took me several tries to figure out how I wanted to do the square on the bottom. I ended up using the Battenberg blanket pattern, which is a blanket pattern I am currently making, and just extended it to make it bigger. Now I got so excited working on this project. I'm actually using my very first magic knot ball that I've ever used in a project, which just means taking smaller scraps and tying them together with a magic knot, and then I held it with a solid color but I couldn't bear to wait for daylight the next day. So I worked through a ton of this during the evening and didn't get it recorded. I apologize for that. But here's how the bottom of the bag is looking. I then just had this creative inspiration to use knitting for the top of the bag because I want the bag to be lighter weight and very, very flexible, which is why I didn't want to use one of my cotton float totes. It was actually really, really easy to do. I just picked up stitches all the way around the top of the bag. And at first I tried using a DK wet yarn from Sorella that's so, so beautiful, but it just didn't match the vibe exactly right. So I switched it out for another magic knot ball and I'm really liking it. Now we have one final task before we're ready to go on vacation and that is to undo this swatch and get everything reorganized. It was really such a tangled mess and it just makes me glad I'm putting the time and effort into this project bag. Now, unfortunately, you're not gonna see things totally done here in this video because time has kind of run out, but in real time, I do have a couple more days to finish up this bag and hopefully get it ready for vacation. So just stay tuned on Instagram, and of course I'll share in my podcast as well. I hope you enjoyed this style of vlog. I had a lot of fun making it and it was kind of fun editing a video for the first time in a really, really long time. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.